and welcome to Naughty Notes. Here we're going to tackle the concept of weight and balance. And um, well, let's uh, let's start at the beginning. A little refresher on some terms from physics. Um, first off, we're going to say that weight times arm equals moment. I've got a picture right here. I've got a balance beam, and I've got a point right here. You know, we have a name for that. We call that the fulcrum. And I've got a pair of weights on either side, both 40 pounds. And you can see them balancing. They're each 100 inches from the fulcrum. Um, well, the weight is the 40 pounds in this case. And the arm is the distance from the fulcrum. In this case, 100 inches. 40 times 100 is 4,000. So the moment that we're looking at here on either side, left or right, is 4,000 inch pounds. Familiar terms. I'm, some of you have a torque wrench. You see uh, foot pounds. Um, uh, maybe you see Newton meters. You see different, um, different units. But we're going with inch pounds. Um, welcome to America. And um, I want to say here, just so we know our units, again, pounds times inches equal inch pounds. All right, that's a little basic stuff, and um, let's move on from here. We have to make a couple big assumptions in this exercise. First off, uh, this board, if it is a board, has no weight, and that's not realistic, and um, we'll move beyond that when we get to an actual airplane. But we'll say, hey, okay, this board's got no weight, and all the weight is concentrated at a single point here and a single point here little teeter-totter that's in perfect balance. So this is just so we get the basics down. And um, let's, let's work out this problem a little bit. Let's change it. And again, you can see, well, it's pretty straightforward, 100 inches by 40 pounds on either side. Well, pretty obvious it's in balance. But let's do this. Let's increase the weight on this side. I'm going to make that more. And I'm going to say, I'm going to replace that with 60 pounds. Now, intuitively, you know exactly what's going to happen. It's not going to be in balance anymore. This thing's going to tip down there like that. There's more weight on this side because we have, in fact, an inequality. We have 6,000 inch pounds on the left, 60 times 100, and we have 40 times 100 for the remaining. We still have 4,000 on the right. Now, this this balance is only going to be, well, balanced if those two moments are equal. So we've got to figure out some way. And intuitively, you know what we've got to do. If we want this to be over like, hit, like so, we're going to have to slide this fulcrum over. Well, it's not going to be 100 anymore. It can't be 100 and 100. In this particular case, it's going to work out to be 120 and 80. Now, we're going to verify this by substituting some numbers. Again, 60 times 80, 4,800 inch-pounds, is equal to the 40 times 120. Now, intuitively, we had to make this arm longer for the lower weight and this arm shorter. Um, I know some of you are thinking, say, well, how did you come up with that, the 120 and the 80? Well, all right, well, that's... Um, if you want to see the algebra, and this, honestly, this is more for a high school algebra class, but um, if I set it up like that, I know it's going to be 60 times 100 minus some amount equal to 40 times 100 plus that same amount. And, of course, if we just crank through the algebra, honestly, this is more math class, and you're not likely to see this part on the FAA test, but we're just getting the concept down here. We'll move, this video will progress into more uh, realistic scenarios. And, of course, you would work all this out, and you would find that X is, of course, 20. So that's how I knew it was going to be 120 for this arm and 100 minus 20, or 80, for this arm. All right, well, there you go. That's the, that's the well, that's the basics. And um, let's step it up just a little bit, and we'll change the diagram. Ready? Well, this weight imbalance problem has three weights, A, B, and C. 
And notice it's missing that fulcrum. Well, that's because we're going to find its location. I'm going to introduce this concept, datum, right there. Datum just means our reference point. Well, for those of you flying your airplanes, that datum could be at the firewall, it could be at the tip of your propeller, but it's a reference point. It's somewhere I'm going to measure from. So I'm starting from here, and I'm going to, well, I'm just going to say I line that datum up with the weight A, and I've got weight B and C. So I've got three on this, um, on my board here that, of course, has no weight. Uh, and um, we're going to calculate on this table, we're going to calculate the location of the fulcrum. And then we'll call that the CG, the center of gravity. So let's go through the math. I've got 60 pounds. A is 60 pounds. It is zero inches because it's on the datum. Hmm, just a random point I picked, but it still has a moment of zero relative to the datum. Now, point B is 50 pounds and it's 60 inches. 60 inches from the datum. So I'll just take, um, well, six times five is 30. So you all know that this would be 3,000. No need to hurt your calculator over that. Uh, it's 3,000 inch pounds. How about um, this one now? We've got a lightweight out here, but it's a long distance away. It's, it's 200 inches. Uh, two times four is eight. So 40 times 200. Yeah, you guessed it. It is 8,000. Now, this is where it gets interesting. And we'll get used to using these tables well, because they're useful and they're fun. Um, we can add up weights. We can add up moments, but we cannot add up the arms because we need an average arm. Let's see how that works. Uh, well, easy numbers here, 60 and 40 is 100, and I've got 50 more, so I have 150 pounds. 150 pounds for these three blocks and on this board with no weight. And I'm going to add up these moments. Zero, that counts, plus three, plus 8,000, and that's going to give me 11,000 inch pounds. Now, I cannot add up these two numbers. That's not going to work. I'm going to take the moment, total moment, divided by the total weight, and I'll get the average arm. All right, we, we're going to probably need a calculator for this one. And we're going to put in 11,000. So you can use your little four banger calculator. And we're going to divide by one. Five, zero, and heavens to Murgatroyd, oh, yay, yeah, yeah. 73 and a third. Well, uh, nearest I can see, well, if I'm going to the nearest inch, I'm just going to call that 73. Pretty cool. So that means, what that means is that the fulcrum is there. The fulcrum's got, we're going to have a new name for it, and we're going to say that is the CG. Relative to the datum, the CG is 73 inches this way. You know we're not going to stop with this. We're going to, of course, we're going to change this problem, make it more interesting. And I'm wondering what's going to happen intuitively if I were to take this 50 pounds and slide it this way. Yikes! Well, you know what's going to happen then. No. If I slide it that way, then this thing is going to change. But how much? Well, let's find out. Let's first let's say I'm going to slide this way out there. And it's not going to be 60 inches anymore. I'm going to replace that with 140. Hmm. Well, watch this. We're just going to pick out some numbers that are going to change here. Well, I am going to just, all this is going to happen because I'm going to change this arm. I'm going to take a lot, take out this 60, and I'm going to replace it with 140 inches. Watch how this affects our calculations because now I've got 50 times 140. And yeah, it's okay if you use this. I know you could do it in your head, but we'll go 140 times 50. And that's 7,000. So your moment moved from 3,000 to 7,000. Okay? Now, again, the well, this moment didn't move. The 8,000 didn't move. 11,000, the total is now off. And I'm going to say 8,000 plus 7,000, that's going to be 50 
or 15,000, 15,000 inch pounds. Now, I know you see it coming here. We're going to take this new number, this 15,000, divide by 150. Well, we can do that by moving the decimal places. We don't need a calculator for that. We can see plain as day that that is now going to be 100. And that means that I am going to move my CG back to there. So that's a little visualization about how that works. So we got to see, we got to, to learn about the datum, calculating the point of balance that we'll call the CG, not just the fulcrum, we can call it a CG, and that's how a, a change would affect my balance point. And uh, we'll do one more example, and this time we're gonna make it look a little bit more like a real airplane. And finally, an example that well, it looks like a real airplane. So we're going to find the um, weight and balance of this imaginary aircraft. And um, let's first just introduce the concept that, you see, depending on where the CG is, see, that might be a forward CG. It might make it a little nose heavy. May, maybe gives it greater stability, you know, but maybe um, a little bit more drag. And we can move all the way back here. And, you know, if we go too far, it may be too far aft be tail heavy, it might not, uh, it might be unstable, but well, all you know is you gotta operate within the limits of your particular aircraft, wherever those CG limits are. So let's do the, well, let's do the math on this uh, hypothetical airplane that we made up. So um, let's first, well, come back to our idea of datum. I'm gonna say right here on the firewall of this aircraft is going to be the datum. It's just the, the reference line. Uh, that's where we said zero is. And then to these various components, these are the ones that change. The front passengers, the rear passengers, the fuel, and the baggage way in the back of the plane. Now, what's really different between this example and those uh, two imaginary board examples we had, those boards had no weight. That's ridiculous. Of course the board weighs something, just like the empty airplane weighs something. This empty airplane, 24, over 2,400 pounds, see, that's going to be the majority of the max takeoff. So let's just, well, let's crank this out and see if the empty airplane has an arm of 28 inches. 28 inches, so that's a little bit past here. This is 23. It's over here somewhere. Let's see when we fill up the airplane with these various components, what effect it has on the CG. Ready? Okay, um, again, uh, a lot of hypothetical examples. I'm going to say first off for fuel, we're going to uh, be on board with uh, 290 uh, pounds. That's Remember, that's pounds. You, um, you can convert your gallon, six pounds per gallon roughly. Um, and we're going to take the arm, the given arm for fuel, 44. So of course we're going to bust out the old calculator and uh, 290, 290 times 44. And you see that number's, well, 12,760, uh, and well, it's just, just mark it right there. And we're going to say the two front seat passengers. Remember, you got uh, the front seat passengers, well, the driver and, and, your, and maybe your right seat passenger, or maybe you've got two pilot crew, and you've got 380 pounds, pretty reasonable for two, uh, for two adults, 23 inches after the datum. So again, you're going to take 380 this time. 380 and we're going to go times 23 equals 8740. Well, mark that down. There you go. And now you're going to take these rear passengers and I'm going to say 310. And we're going to read off the chart. The uh, after the datum 55 inches. So let's take that, combine it all. 310 times 55 equals, oh, heavens to Murgatroyd, 17,000. That's up there. Oops, oh, sorry, I hit the wrong thing. Well, so much for that. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to type this one in manually. Where'd that, where'd that thing go? Uh, 17,050, hang on. 17,050. Okay, and we'll put that one down there. And then, we're going to take our baggage, and a lot of times we have a baggage limit. It's not a lot of weight, but 
and it's way back there, 107 inches aft. So you'll see, watch what this does to the moment. 150 times 107, and that's going to equal you know, 16,000. And let's see if, if I got this working better this time. There, that's even better. That's okay. And, um, all right, well, you know what we got to do? We got to add them all up. Add up the left column, and let's add up the right column. A lot of arithmetic here, but eh, it's worth it. Um, 2450 for the empty aircraft, and we're going to add 290 pounds of fuel. Then we're going to add 380 pounds in the front seats, plus 310 pounds in the rearward seats, and 150 right there in the baggage, 3580. Sure hope that's, well, I'm assuming that in this made-up aircraft, 3580. Oh, yeah, that's, that's within max takeoff. 3580. Now, again, we cannot add up the arms. Can't do that. you got to add up the moments and then divide. So let's do that. Uh, 68, 6. And then I'm going to add 12, 7, 60. And I'm going to add... 8740. 8740. I'm going to add 17050. Then I'm going to add 16050 for a grand total of 123,200 on the inch pounds. Let's see if that shows up there. Yes, it does. So again, that's the that is the sum. All the moments may be added. The weights may be added. So you're going to take the sum of the moments, divide by the sum of the weights. Where's that calculator? It's already ready. And we're just going to divide by 3580. And there you go. It looks like 34.4. So the CG is going to be somewhere down there. 34.4 inches. If you look at what effect this weight has had, we can say, remember, you got all these weights acting down on the aircraft. And then you've got, well, and then you've got your center of gravity. It looks like it has shifted from the empty aircraft 28 inches after the datum. It's moved back a little bit to 34. So I'm guessing the CG's moved up. And for the purpose of this hypothetical airplane, well within the limits. So congratulations and um, for, Mel, uh, for spending a little time with me and doing some arithmetic. I hope this helps you on your FAA written exam. And that's all for now from 90 Notes.